say, oh, life insurance is too expensive, it doesn't work, and you can't use it in a portfolio. This particular case that we're talking about is a 65-year-old male. Admittedly, he's had some health problems in the past, so we're running it as a standard type of illustration. In this particular situation, we have a 10 pay, where the client is essentially putting in money every year for 10 years. Now, the leverage in that first 10 years is pretty substantial, meaning that when he puts $1 into the policy, he's getting $10 back in the way of death benefit. So in this particular scenario, in the first 10 years, he's putting in about $400,000 into the policy. He's getting his $400,000 back plus an additional $500,000 of death benefit. So he's got a two to one return on his money, tax free of roughly $900,000 of death benefit. At, as he moves through years 11 to 20 to 30, the policy now reverts to what we call a policy with an A type pricing schedule, meaning that the cost of insurance is diminished dramatically so that the policy at this point is really growing fast in the way of cash value. That though does not allow the death benefit to potentially grow its sets based on that cash value number. However, in running the rate of return on this particular policy over 20 years based on what the client put in, based on what he's able to pull out, it works out to be about a 7% tax-free rate of return for the client. That, at that point, puts the client at 85 years old, from 65 to 85. The longer we start to go now, the death benefit now starts growing exponentially because the cash value now is growing exponentially. So the client, during this whole time frame, has either or. He has the ability to just let the money sit in there and have a death benefit that transitions to his heirs tax-free, or they have access to this cash if they need to on a tax-free basis as well. One of the things that I would say though is, is another ancillary benefit to this policy is, is anywhere within roughly the first 10 years of this policy, if he experiences a long-term care type of situation, the policy provides $150,000 lump sum that can be used for long-term care, which is roughly $370 a day for five years. So there is another ancillary benefit that's built into this in the sense that it does take care of a long-term need, a chronic illness need, if the client were to lose two of his uh, six activities of daily living. So we ran one on the wife who's 70 years old because the wife is older, Obviously, the policy doesn't have as long of time to build cash and some of those things, but running the same type of scenario for the wife, we're creating about a 4%, a little bit over 4% tax-free rate of return based on what the client put into the policy and based on what they can receive at this policy by age 90. After 90, that expands a little bit because the policy now is generating more death benefit because the cash value is increasing exponentially. So when you frame life insurance in a, a different way that is supposed to be framed, I essentially look at the cash value of life insurance to try to see if I can have a low risk component such as a bond type component, have the ability to have the client um, ha still have access to the cash, have the client have a guaranteed death benefit that basically self-completes this plan. If they were to die, there's ultimately that big death benefit that's going to go to the heirs tax-free, which is one of their concerns. But there's also a lump sum that's available for long-term care too. So we call it in poker outs. This particular client has lots of outs. They have access to tax-free cash buildup. They have a death benefit that goes tax-free. They have a long-term care benefit that goes if they need that particular type of care. And ultimately, if we look at the actual internal rate of return on the policy over 20 years in this particular situation with the 70-year-old woman, it works out to be about a 4.5% tax-free rate of return. Not a home run, but still giving them some solid returns on their money based on this low interest rate environment. Which brings me to the last point. There are uh, pundits out there that say life insurance is very expensive, it's bad, it's, it's this and this. When it's framed right and it's used responsibly and the policy is designed to try to maximize cash value, minimize the cost of, of insurance and, and things like that, it can be a really nice tool to accumulate cash on a tax-friendly basis that also has other ancillary benefits. 
if I were to run this same illustration on the client and the client was 10, 15, 20 years younger, you're going to find that it has a, a, a phenomenal rate of return that's going to approach 6, 7% internal type of return that is tax free. It's not a stock market type return and it's not designed to be a stock market type return. Um, it gives you some of the upside of the market, but it gives you none of the downside. It's designed to be a lower risk solution, such as a bond, that gives you some of the upside that a bond doesn't give you. And it's also available to give you access to cash if you need it for an emergency, cash for long-term care, and also a death benefit if ultimately you want to pass it on to your heirs. So again, let's frame life insurance properly, but also don't throw the baby out with the bathwater saying that, oh, it's too expensive, it doesn't work, because it does have a lot of values. And as I said, if it's designed right and you explain it to the client and it fits a number of needs for the clients, it can be a great tool to add to your portfolio to get a little bit of diversification and also be able to do some neat things that, uh, that you can do for yourself, your heirs, and if you get sick. Thanks.